just as we hook a, a little miniature brim. This little video is going to be a bit of a, a tackle talk, a bit of a gear talk, something to nerd out, nerd out on um, about all the gear that I've been using in recent episodes and the stuff I take out with me when I'm out on the water most of the time as well. So the one I'm throwing right now is where we're gonna, where we're gonna start. So it's the Yamaga Blanks, which a lot of you are familiar with now. We've been selling them for a little while and they're super popular, made in Japan, handmade, beautiful rods, very, very lightweight in the hand. This particular model is the 711, seven foot 11. Seven foot 11 long, obviously, two piece mid joint, which is really handy for transporting but you don't notice any of that old school two-piece clunkiness. Uh, they cast really well uh, and you feel everything through them really, really well. I use this particular model for what we're doing right now. Fishing flats, casting a long, long way, but still quite accurately. You'd be surprised at how accurately you can cast this rod. Um, it has quite a soft action. So the tip, there's not really light in the tip and then it folds away through the middle, but it does still have a surprising amount of power in the butt section, which I like, because when I've, I've hooked good fish with this and once it gets to the bottom of the rod, you do have a bit of control to, to steer that fish and, and pull it away. Not so much deep structure, but you know, you've got reeds and you've got sticks. You can just sort of just ease them away from it. I've been throwing it around this little pro lure crank this morning, this XS36, and they just love it. This is, you know, half a meter deep. And this is what this rod is, in my mind, for Australian conditions is built for, not so much in Japan, because they have other fish, but for Australian conditions, this rod is perfect. I run it with a 25 shallow rivalry. Uh, I run all shallow spool reels. They have a lighter drag system. It's a more finesse drag system. We'll try not to crash. It's a bit more of a finesse drag system. Uh, so you have finer adjustments when you're on a fish, when if you, you turn that drag knob a couple of clicks, you're not gonna just lock your drag up and pop the hooks out or pop your leader. Uh, 2,500 size reels because they come with a bigger gearbox. This is the full size, not an FC, which is a finesse custom, which is a 2000 gearbox on a 2,500 rotor and spool. This is a full 2,500 size body, 2,500 size rotor and spool. The bigger spool diameter just gives you better line management, gives you better casting, bigger loops coming off the line, my goodness, we're going to keep crashing. <laughs> uh, bigger loops coming off, it's, it just casts a bit better and you get more line back when you're winding the handle. Having that bigger gearbox, you might notice in some of the videos where I don't even pump and wind, I just wind. Uh, having that gearbox just gives me a bit more power to be able to do that easy uh, and let my drag do the work and let the rod do the work for me in, in tight structure situations. And when they're out in the open, you can pump and wind and play with the fish. But um, that's my flat setup. We'll go through the rest of them as well. I've got a heap more there to show you, so we'll keep going. Now, following on from the Yamaga, my next outfit is the Miller Rods Grub Freak. It's no secret, again, that I love the Miller Rods. I've got a whole quiver full of them. But one of the first ones I pick up is the Grub Freak. It's a seven foot three rod with a fast taper. However, the tip is quite soft, so you can feel a lot of the bites. I'll send a cast out there and see if we can find one. But it's awesome for throwing, obviously, soft plastics, hence the name Grub Freak, Grub Soft Plastics. It's getting bit to pieces there. Um, that soft tip allows you to slow roll and not pull the fish, the lure out of the fish's mouth. It's, um, but then when you get that proper bite, it loads up really quick where you can drive the hook home and set that single hook, which you don't have to do with the treble baits because it just pins them. Whereas a single hook, you really need to drive that hook home. Um, it's got a 2,500 shallow in there, like all the other reels I use. And, oh, there's the fish. <laughs> um, yeah, and any soft plastics. Um, I like to obviously slowly roll, but you can shake the rod tip and, and make little twitch baits. It's a whiting. Oh, that's a good whiting too. Sorry, distractions. Might have to have a feed of fish and chips for dinner. <laughs> um, yeah, so any soft plastic baits. I'm using the Bruce at the moment, which is one of my favorite, favorite soft plastic creature baits, but you can use it for uh, little um, fork tails, paddle tails, grub tails. It doesn't really matter. Um, it works them all really, really well. Slow roll, shake the rod tip. Uh, it casts really well being seven foot three, but still, still very accurately. Um, and it, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just very distracting. <laughs> Send that guy back. Yeah, it casts really well, loads really well. Uh, gives you a lot of control through the fight. Like there, it's a more powerful blank than say the Yamaga, which is a soft flats rod. So it gives you a lot of control. I can fish in the structure. Uh, I think you would have seen one of the Tackle West TV episodes where I pulled the, the big fish off the bridge. I was using the Grub Freak. Plenty of power to steer fish away while keeping the hooks in with that soft tip. Uh, it's a really nice balance between too soft and too, too stiff. And um, it's probably one of the first ones I pick up. I got that match with a Surtate 2500 Shallow, which I love. Um, really nice combo. 
I run Reverie Surt hates TD Blacks. It doesn't matter, 25 Shallow is the reel I pick. You'll, you'll find across the rest of them, which I, that's the last I'll say about that. So yeah, Grub Freak, soft plastic setup. It's the go-to. Fish. Right. So following on, this is heavy. <laughs> following on from the, uh, the Grub Freak, the one I got in my hand is the Blade Freak, which I've spoken about quite a few times before. And it's my next pick of rods that I take out with me all the time. It's again, it's seven foot three. This is actually not a bad fish. It's seven foot three. And um, it's got a little bit more of a regular taper than the Grub Freak. So it's not quite as soft in the tip, but it bends through the midsection a bit more, which is a pretty good example right there of how it bends. Um, let me just get a net for this fish. So yeah, it bends nicely through the middle of the rod and is perfect for working blades, which this guy has absolutely crunched. So, <clears throat> it gives you a really, really good cast. Oh my, it came out, there we go. We'll send this one back. So it gives you a really, really good cast. Um, with these blades, you can send them a long way, whether it's parallel to a drop-off, how I like to work them, or in this case, I cast up to the reed line and worked it down the drop-off. Um, with that regular taper, it gives you enough in the tip to work a heavier blade without completely noodling the rod. But then when you set that hook, um, the whole rod just folds nicely and is just a nice cushion just to keep those trebles in their, in their mouth because they can pull out quite easily. 25 shallow on there. Um, it's got a slightly longer butt and that actually is what helps this rod be a blading rod. So a blading rod is typically something that's gonna be tip up. You want the tip to float up so when you're lifting the lure, this rod is it's still weighted tip down, but it's just got that little bit extra here. So when you do move your the rod tip up, it kind of floats up with you and makes it just, it's so much easier. And that's the kind of thing you get when you get into technique specific rods. It's the little things that make the rods so good at what they do. So yeah, that's the Blade Freak. Always comes out in my quiver. Um, alongside all the other rods, does a really good job throwing blades. It does other stuff as well, obviously, which I've spoken about, but um, yeah, if you want to throw blades, you've got to get a Blade Freak. So working the blade, just cast out along or up your, your drop off or wherever you're fishing, you can even fish on the flat, and um, let it sink to the bottom and just pick up the slack and lift. There was a fish on that when it was, it was sitting on it. Just give it little lifts and catch, or well, lose a fish. <laughs> um, just little small sharp hops off the bottom. Uh, it looks like I'm moving the rod tip a lot, but I'm not. I'm only moving that lure maybe that far off the bottom. It's, a, it's a, quite a subtle thing. I'm just lifting till I feel it vibrate and then just dropping the rod tip straight back down, wind up that little bit of slack and pause. And a lot of times, like what just happened then is they'll come and sit on it on the pause. You might not even feel the tick like that. I didn't feel that fish, but I went to lift and he was sitting on the lure. Now it's only a small one, but um, I think it's pretty good proof of concept. <laughs> I'm a bit scared of the trebles today. <laughs> That's the VX35, which is my favorite blade. I've said it many times before. They usually have a belly treble. That one was embedded in this finger yesterday, so it's not on the lure currently, but one treble still seems to be working. It's my favorite. That color I really like, but honestly, the color doesn't matter. You can see it's got a lot of war wounds and it's almost silver. I've got one of these, which is completely chrome and it still catches fish. I used it in the comp, caught a heap of fish and just kept using it because I was feeling good with it. It went from a bluegill color to chrome, it didn't matter. You put that in front of the fish, it's the right size, it has the right resonance, the vibration through the water, they're gonna eat it. Following on from the Blade Freak, I have the Twitch Freak here in my hand. Now it is a six foot 10, uh, one piece rod. Great for casting, as the name suggests, or twitching uh, jerk baits, and little crank baits. Uh, I really like it for what we're doing right now. We're doing top waters. Uh, we've got a pretty good bite going on at the moment. I'm throwing a slippery dog around. It's great for bent minnows as well. It's got that, that lighter tip. So for when you, you want to cast those light lures, you can really sling them along and it, does, it protects that lure from being ripped from the water. Oh, that was a fish. It protects that lure from being ripped out of the water. And then when you set the hook on the fish, it's got a bit more of a regular action, the multi-loading blank. So the, just like that, the blank folds away, um, but still with plenty of power. This is only a small fish, so you're not going to see the full load of the blank there. But again, we love it when uh, a plan comes together. <laughs> yes, it's only small, don't look at that. But um, yeah, so that blank loads all the way through, especially when you're on a bigger fish and it really cushions the, the, the hook set as well. Just like with the Blade Freak, I compare the blade and the twitch together. 
Uh, as a, they're very similar style rods, 1.610 and 1.73. I find the tapers are quite similar. Uh, that Blade Freak just has that slight tip, tip up action and obviously a bit more length. If we can get this one off. These little assist hooks, they go in there uh, and they, they stay in pretty well. I'm just a bit uh, wary of treble hooks today, as I might have mentioned before. So that little guy to go, go and grow big. But uh, yes, that is the, the Twitch Freak LT. Make sure it's the LT, not the M. There's a new one that's just come out. The LT, uh, it is a cracking rod for all the techniques I just mentioned. Oh, it's on it. Eat it. Or oh, eat it. <laughs> eat it. Come on. Oh, my God. Oh, that was a nice bite. I'm in trouble. No, I'm in the reeds. That was actually not the right fish. Or I just had a light drag and it just got me in there. But it ate it properly. That was that was fun. Yeah, no, nah, it's gone. This is the lure we've been throwing this morning along these reed edges with the Twitch Freak. It's a Slippery Dog 65. Comes with the BKK Striker Assist on the back as standard. They're uh, very effective at pinning hooks, uh, pinning fish. That one has been absolutely destroyed though. That last fish took me through the reeds and absolutely just mangled them. They have a treble on the belly. Really good walk the dog stick bait. Just get them up on the top and they just dart from side to side like that. And you pause them and you just watch the boils. I'm sure we've got the footage of it. They're just, they're all over it today. You just see these big boils. You miss like oh, 10 fish and you get one maybe, but it's wicked fun to watch it happen. You tell me when you're ready. I'm filming. Oh, cool. Well, perfect, perfect timing. Um, the last rod we're going to talk about in this little video series is the Brawler. So the Brawler is six foot seven, one piece. It's a very unique rod in the Miller Rods range. It's a very light tip, but super fast and stiff. It's a two to five kilo rod. So this tip is light. I can cast ultra light weights. I'm skip casting this little Flick 295 at the moment. But when you hit the fish and you lock up, it has all of the power in the world. Like you can, well, there was a bite straight away. You can, um, you can really put the hurt. So I typically use this, this rod just like that. Um, on structure, like we're fishing behind me with the, this is the, the tea trees. Now these are only small ones, but um, you can really put the hurt on the, the big fish. I like to use it back in Perth on the bridges. I throw masks and just lock up and rip fish out. Um, if you're gonna throw Eco Gear Aquas uh, down at Mandurah under the docks, perfect rod for it. Here on the Blackwood when you have tea trees which are gnarly and covered in barnacles, this rod is perfect for it. I like to skip cast things like this new Flick 295. This thing skips beautifully on a hidden weight system. It, uh, it has the weight inside of the body for when it sinks, so it sinks a little bit more horizontally and it, um, it just gives it a better sink time and more natural sink and you can just skip cast them all day because there's no head in the water getting stuck. So it's, um, it's a really, really good setup. As I said, two to five kilo, the backbone in this rod, it's got a very short butt as well. So I like to do a lot of one-handed flick casts under this way, over that way, uh, to try and get it in all the pockets. You can see all the little gaps and the gnarly overhangs there. You want to get in and underneath those things and um, that's where the best fish are gonna be. So this rod allows you to do that, especially standing up on the front of the boat. I can get my hand down and skip like that um, and it gets right underneath it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I just <laughs> pulled that fish out. I wasn't ready for that one, nearly lost the rod out of my hand. Um, skip in underneath there and, and pull fish just, just like that. Easy as, how can it be? <laughs> so that's, that's a rundown of the main rods I've been using in my last video in the Tack West TV and the rods I just take with me generally when I go out fishing. Um, they cover me for all the bases, anything I can really think of that I'm gonna be doing in a day's brim fishing. And um, yeah, they're really quality bits of kit. So yeah, if you wanna see more, come into the shops, Osborne Park, Beckenham, Myrie, jump online at tackwest.com.au, give us a call, come and say good day. I love talking about this stuff. It's, it's what I love to do. And as you can see, we're out here doing it now. It's, um, it's pretty good fun, so yeah. Thanks for watching this, uh, this video on all the bits and pieces and we'll, we'll see you again next time.